Okay, in this video we'll look at scientific notation, another way of expressing numbers in a, a little more compact form and more accurately express the correct number of significant digits in either large numbers or in very small numbers. And the easiest way to understand scientific notation is to just look at it through example. So if we took the number, for example, 236,000, this is in standard notation. That number expressed in scientific notation would be 2.36 times 10 to the fifth. So this is the scientific notation. And it's a common misconception that scientific notation is designed to make very large numbers easier to write or make very small numbers easier to write. But in reality, that's only coincidental that it, it makes large numbers easier to write or small numbers easier to write. It's really about expressing the correct number of significant fig fi figures. So this number, for example, the 236 at the beginning is, are the only significant digits in this number. These three are not considered significant figures. But it's a little vague. It's ambiguous. Do they count or do they not count? Do I know those are really there or are there just placeholders to tell me where the 2, 3, and the 6 belong? So by writing the number in scientific notation, it takes away that ambiguity and makes it clear which numbers are significant and which numbers are not significant. So if you remember your rules for some, from significant figures, you'll know that if I put a zero here, that would, would be a significant figure because it would be a final zero after the decimal, whereas these that are before the decimal are a little ambiguous. The number could have been written several ways. I wrote 2.36 times 10 to the fifth, but I could have also written 23.6 times 10 to the fourth, 236 times 10 to the third, 2360 times 10 to the second, and all of those would have been the same number, but the standard form, the most common form of scientific notation, places one digit, the leading digit or the most significant digit, to the left of the decimal. That should be a non-zero number. This number is called the factor, and that should be a number between one and nine. And the second half of the scientific notation is called the order of magnitude. And that's just simply the power of 10. So if you look at how you take a number from standard notation into scientific notation, the way you really do it is by decreasing the number in size on one end and increasing the number in size on the other end so that the two undo each other and return back the original number. So for example, 236,000 is much larger than 2.36. So I've made this number much, much smaller. How much smaller? 100,000 times smaller because I moved the decimal from its current location here one, two, three, four, five places to the left, making the number 100,000 times smaller. So I multiply the number by a power of 10 that will undo that amount that I made it smaller. In that case, I would multiply by 10 to the fifth. So the two things that have occurred with the factor and the order of magnitude will always be opposite to each other. In this case, this made the number smaller, so therefore I used the order of magnitude to make the number bigger. But it could go the other way. I could make the number smaller and in that case, I would use the, the, I should say, make the number bigger, and then therefore I would use the order of magnitude to make it smaller. These two always work in opposite directions to each other, and that exponent on the top of the power of 10 is always the number of decimal places that you should move the decimal to put it back into standard notation. So let's look at a few examples. Let's convert the following. into scientific notation. We'll look at a few examples. So let's take the example 1812. Okay, so the first step in turning a number in standard notation into scientific notation is to rewrite the number and move the decimal place until you have a single non-zero number, number between one and nine, a single non-zero number to the left of the decimal, and all the rest of the digits then follow in their normal position, but to the right of it. Okay, in this case, I move the decimal one, two, three places to the left. 
which made the number much smaller. 1.812 is much smaller than 1,812. So what I need the order of magnitude to do is to undo that. Since I slid the decimal three places to the left, multiplying by 10 to the third will undo that. So 1.812 times 10 to the third is still 1,812. This made it smaller, and this made it bigger by the exact same amount, and therefore I still have the same number. It's just been expressed in a new way in scientific notation. Let's try a little bit bigger number. Let's try 583 million, 219,172. Okay, so the first step again, I'm going to move the decimal from its current location, which is right here. I'm going to slide the decimal to the left so that only a single digit is to the left of the decimal and all the remaining digits will still be there but they'll be written after the decimal in their same order. Okay, now obviously I've made the number much much smaller going from 583 million down to only 5.83 and the way I did that was by sliding the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places to the left so the way that I would show that this number is actually 583 million is by multiplying by 10 to the eighth. Exactly the number of places that I moved the decimal to get the number into this form, and that's it. That is now in common scientific notation. As well as large numbers, we can also do small numbers, but let me point out before we do that this number really didn't get shorter to write. It's actually still, it's even longer than it was before. So it's a little bit of a, a misconception that scientific notation is only designed to make numbers easier to write that are very large or very small. It's really more about the number of significant digits. In this case, every digit was significant. So when I wrote it in scientific notation, I didn't drop any of the digits. And therefore, adding a power of 10 to the end of it only made the number even longer than it was before. So if we look at small numbers, which is another way that scientific notation is often seen, Let's take the number 0. Point, I'm going to write six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then 294. So 0.00000294. Very, very small number. So in turning this into scientific notation, I'll do the same thing that I did before. I will take the non zero numbers out, and I will move the decimal until it is only a single non zero number to the left of the decimal. In this case, that's going to be the most significant digit is always the first one that you run into the non-zero. That's going to be 2. So 2.94. Now, that number is much larger than the original number. Much, much larger. So I need to multiply by a power of 10, which will decrease its size back down to where it's supposed to be. In this case, I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places to the right so therefore, I will use a negative exponent, 10 to the minus 7 times 2.94 will be the exact number that I started with. And that number is now transformed into scientific notation. This number got bigger, so then therefore I use a power of 10 that makes it smaller. But if you want to think of it in simple ways, the large numbers will always get positive orders of magnitude, powers of 10. And the very small numbers will always get negative powers of 10. Let's look at a number that's not quite as small as this one. Let's just look at 0 0.12. So that's not a very small number, but it can still be written in scientific notation. And the way you would do that is to move the decimal so that there is only one So 1.2 is larger than 0.12, so therefore we need to undo that by multiplying by a power of 10. In this case, I only made it bigger by one power of 10 because I only slid it one place to the right, so that would be 1.2 times 10 to the minus 1. Okay, and that's it for scientific notation. You use the factor to reduce the size of the numbers so with a single non-digit number to the left and all the rest of the significant digits behind the decimal. And whether you make the number 
smaller or you make the number larger, you use the power of 10 and the exponent on that order of magnitude to undo whatever change that you made so that the number still has the same value as the original number. All of the examples that we looked at, this number is the same as the number above it and same with all of the other examples. Now we could also go in reverse. So let's back up. And let's look at an example where we go in reverse. Instead of turning something into scientific notation, let's take a number that's already in scientific notation and look at how you can turn that number back into a standard notation number. So let's try a, a large number here. Let's convert. the following into standard notation. And as an example, let's use 8.43 times 10 to the 10. So that's a very large number. Okay, so your first step would be to do this. To rewrite the numbers from the factor 8.43, and what we need to do is to figure out, we're going to have to add zeros. Usually at the beginning or at the end of the number, we're probably going to have to add some zeros in most cases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make little hops underneath this guy that are equal to the number on the exponent up here. So this says to move the decimal 10 places, it should be a much bigger number. 8.43 is much smaller than the real number. So I'm going to move the decimal 10 places to the right. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's the true location of the decimal and we're going to fill in placeholder zeros. Okay, now this is really sloppy way to write the number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the number below. I'm going to add some commas in there and break it up the way we would normally do. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the decimal off because it's implied that the decimal is always at the end if you don't see it. So there's zero, 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 comma, that gets rid of those three, zero, 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 comma, gets rid of those three, zero, zero, three, comma, four, eight. So this number is 84 billion, 300 million in standard notation and just exactly opposite of what we did to convert this number into scientific notation, we just do the opposite. The only difference is it's really common to have to do this little thing where you show the hops just to make sure that you get the correct number of zeros in there. Because if you miss a zero or you add too many zeros, then your number can maybe off by quite a bit from the original number. So it's very convenient to just walk it in, make the little hops, fill in zeros wherever you need to fill them in, and then rewrite the number again in the final version so that you don't make any mistakes. Let's look at the opposite side. Let's go back to the numbers that were very small. Let's try 3.77 times 10 to the minus 3. So this is a should be a very small number, but it's, it appears bigger than it really is. But I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to write the 3.77. I'm going to place the decimal where it, where it shows in the scientific notation. And now I'm going to move it. But in this case, I know what I need to do is make the number smaller. This number should be much smaller than they're showing it. So I'm going to move it three places to the left. One, two, three. So there's the true location of the decimal. Three places further to the left. So I'll go ahead and rewrite the number. I'll add one more zero at the beginning just to make it clear that this is a, a very small number. Two zeros, these two zeros, three, seven, seven and that number is now in scientific notation. So we will commonly use scientific notation to make very large numbers easier to write and to make very small numbers easier to write, but it's really about expressing the correct number of significant figures. Both of these are correct ways of expressing this. It's just that this, for example, tends to be a little more convenient than writing a number that's that this large. And there are numbers even much larger, especially in chemistry and physics. You'll find numbers in biology. In all sciences, really, you'll find numbers that are far, far too large to be constantly writing them out. In some cases, they might have 20 or even 30 digits. And scientific notation is just a much easier way for us to express those numbers and still keep track of the, the correct number of significant figures in that those digits.